Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Derek Ong with the uh, continuation of uh, using SPSS for data analysis. Uh, this is the next video from video number 20, um, how we use SPSS to conduct the correlation analysis and the multiple linear regression. So as you have noticed uh, from the previous video, I have already mentioned to you that uh, the assumptions uh, in multiple linear regression and also how we do correlation. So the first thing we need to do is to check on the correlation and basically how we look at the correlation is going to analyze uh, regression, uh, sorry, correlate bivariate. Now we can basically do a uh, correlation between uh, two variables, the dependent and independent, or basically any variables. But we can also do a bivariate correlation of all the variables at one go. So I'm going to just press there, all the, all the uh, variables, and press OK. And so when we see this, uh, basically what this means is um, there is a correlation in terms of two-tailed correlation, significant correlation between album sales and uh, the advertising uh, attractiveness of band, uh, the um, radio, number of plays and also the advertising budget right so we can know that this variable here is a good variable and these other variables are predictors so what we want to do is try to predict uh, advertising budget number of radio plays and attractiveness of bands uh, to predict uh, album sales so before we can actually have a causation we need to make sure that there is a correlation so this tells us that there is a correlation of advertising budget, number of radio plays, and attractiveness of bands uh, uh, predicting album sales. So next, we're going to do the um, the uh, multiple linear regression. So we know that this is going to be a linear regression, so we first have to check that everything is of a quantitative measure. We go to Analyze, Regression, Linear. We put in the album sales as the dependent variable, and then the three variables here as the independent. We go to Statistics. We want to look at the R-square change, descriptives, part and partial correlation, qualitative dynastics. We want to look at the confidence intervals, the Durbin-Watson, case-wise diagnostics in case there's any cases that's outside the outliers. Of course, Durbin Watson here, we want to check for uh, the five um, assumptions. Yeah, continue. The plots to check for heteroscedasticity. So we put in the uh, predicted residuals with the uh, residuals here look at the histogram and the normal probability plot to see whether or not there is any uh, deviation from normality. Uh, we can skip this. Options, we can skip this. And we just press OK. All right. So looking at the uh, main thing here, of course, we've already got a correlation, so we can use that correlations at the very top. So we don't have to worry too much about this in terms of album sales. As you can see, all of them are highly correlated with album sales. But we may have to look at some of the other correlations between the uh, significant variables of the independent variables. So let's go through first model summary. Now, the most important thing in model summary is to report the R-square, whereby here it looks as if it is a good R-square. It's actually the um, variation of the dependent variable that is explained by the model. So this is a good R-square, 0 0.665. And of course, the ANOVA table, which shows you the significance of the model, 129.498, which is a highly significant model. And of course, we look at the uh, coefficients. So this is the coefficients where we build our model. Uh, 
And if we want to build the model, we use the unstandardized beta coefficients as we build our model for prediction. But usually what we do is we report the standardized beta, the t-statistics, and the significance of the t-statistics. So we can see here that all three independent variables are significant. And uh, if we look at the collinearity diagnostics, VIF is all right, tolerance is okay. If we check from the previous videos that the tolerance should be uh, more than 0 0.2 and the VIF should be less than 10. Uh, Case-wise diagnostics reveals that there is one case which is really an outsider, but that's not going to be an issue. If it's going to be an issue, then what we do is we can run the regression without this case number. Looking at the charts, this residuals looks fairly normal, so we've checked that one. And... Uh, there seems to be no apparent fanning pattern for the uh, album sales, so heteroscedasticity is not of a problem. So where does that leave us? So looking at the uh, previous slides, we've got linearity, normality is good, uh, there's no heteroscedasticity, uh, Durbin Watson, I forgot to watch about Durbin Watson. Where's the Durbin Watson? Durbin Watson. Durbin Watson is good, yeah? It's uh, in between negative 2 and plus 2. Hence, the only exception is uh, multicollinearity, but if we use the variance inflation factor and the tolerance, we don't see much of a problem. So, in terms of uh, reporting, we have to report by relationship. And we say that the uh, t-values with the standardized beta and the standard error, and of course the decision is supported for all three, and of course the lower limit and upper limit. Yeah, I will talk about the effect size in a while. R square is good. 66.5% of the variation in album sales is explained by the model. The F3196, this should be a subscript. And uh, it is 129.498. It's two stars, so it's significant at one level, 1% uh, level, which means it's a very significant model to use for prediction. Durbin Watson is good, which means there's no autocorrelation of the uh, errors. And uh, this F square is, of course, the effect size, which I have not calculated. Now, um, there has been literature saying that uh, significance is not enough to measure a good model. And hence, we have to now um, include in what we call as the effect size. So, for a good effect size, usually we use the Cohen's uh, effect size, whereby a moderate uh, effect would be 0 0.15, uh, a strong effect would be a 0 uh, 0.2, and a not so strong effect with a small effect would be a 0 0.01. So, using this Cohen's D or Cohen's uh, effect size, we take the R square included, which is the R square this one, 0 0.665, minus the R squared excluded. So what we do is we take out one of the uh, independent variables and we run the regression only on these two variables. And we get a new R squared, which is definitely going to be smaller. So we take the full model minus the R squared model excluded. And then we divide over the one minus R squared included of the full model and we put that as our effect size. So we can check, once we've calculated these three effect size, we can check how much each of these significant relationships has an effect on the population. So um, when we do any regression analysis from now on, we will have to report this effect size, which is actually very good practice. Okay.
So that's all for the uh, multiple linear regression. If you have any questions, please do email me or else uh, please watch my, the rest of my other videos for more explanation. Thank you.